Hi, I'm Professor Baldwin, and today I'm going to teach you how to use modeling with exponential and logarithmic functions. Let's start with exponential growth and decay models. First, look at our equations for exponential growth and exponential decay, and notice that the only difference is that the exponent on the decay model is negative. Okay, if you look at the definition, y is the variable changing exponentially with respect to t, time. y0 will be your initial value when time is 0. And k is going to be our constant. Let's look at some examples. Suppose that $10,000 is invested and at the end of five years, the value of the account is $13,771.28. We're going to use the model A equals PE to the power of RT to determine the average rate of return R under continuous compounding. So what do we know? We know our equation is A equals PE to the RT. We're told 10,000 is invested. So that's the initial amount invested. That'll be our P. E is a constant, it's an irrational number. We're told at the end of five years, so that's our time, T. The value of the account then is this 13,771 and 28 cents and we're trying to find r. So we have an exponential form. So what we want to do is we want to isolate that exponent. Let's divide both sides by this 10,000. We can leave that left side as a fraction and we'll have 13,771.28 divided by 10,000. We're going to leave everything in fraction form until we get to the end and we go to put it all in our calculator. That's going to keep us from over rounding. Okay, now we have that exponent isolated. So remember to get rid of an exponent, you can use logarithms. So we can take the log of each side. And because we have the irrational number e, we want to use that natural log. So we're going to take the natural log of both sides. And when you take the natural log of something that has a base e, you're left with just that exponent. So our left, left hand side will be the natural log of this crazy fraction. And on the right, it's 5r. Now remember we're trying to solve for r. So it's being multiplied by 5, so divide both sides by 5. And now we have that r is equal to this crazy, crazy thing, the natural log of 13,771.28 divided by 10,000. That whole natural log divided by 5. So we're going to enter the natural log of this 13,771.28 divided by the 10,000. And you can let the calculator get that value for you first, and then you can divide by 5. And we get 0 0.064. So this is equal to 0 0.064. Remember what we're solving for. We're solving for r, which is an interest rate. So we want to convert this to a percentage, and that would be 6.4%. Let's look at another example. Here we have the function q of t, and we're going to use it to determine the age of a piece of wood that has 42% of its carbon-14 remaining and we're going to round to the nearest 10 years. Well, what do we know? We know time is what we need to find, right? T is our, our unknown. 
and we have 42% remaining. This is 0.42% of that initial amount. So this is our Q of T. So Q of T is 0.42 Q0 equal to Q0 E to this crazy exponent and our unknown T. Now remember, we want to isolate that exponent. So let's divide both sides by Q of 0. We have 0 0.42 equals E and then our crazy exponent and our variable t. Now we're going to take the natural log of both sides because doing that will get rid of the base e and will leave us with just the exponent. So the left hand side stays is 0 0.42, the natural log of that. And the right hand side is our exponent, negative 0.000121t. Remember, we're solving for t, so divide by this crazy decimal. And we do that on both sides. And we get t is equal to the natural log of 0 0.42 divided by that crazy decimal. Remember, you're not expected to know these logs by heart. So get your calculator out. We're going to take the natural log of 0.42. Then we're going to divide that by negative 0 0.000121. And we get 7,169 and a decimal. Remember, we're rounding to the nearest 10 years. So that's our tenth our decimal place of the tens units, so 7,170 years. So we just learned that it would take 7,170 years for a piece of wood to only have 42% of its initial carbon-14 remaining. Let's look at a couple more examples. Here we're talking about the population of Texas. On January 1st, 2010, the population of Texas was 25.2 million. Then on January 1st, 2019, the population was 29.1 million. Let T equal zero represent the year 2010. In part A, we want to come up with the function defined by P of T equals P of zero E to the KT. To represent the population p of t of texas t years after 2010 so we're coming up with our function so we want a function p of t and it's equal to p of zero remember p of zero is the initial value so it's our initial population and that initial population was 25.2 million so we can put that in, 25.2. E is the irrational number. K is our constant. We don't know what K is, but we should know what T is. Well, we don't know T right now. So how do we find T in order to find K? Well, let's look at the other information we're told. We're told that in 2019, the population is 29.1. This is saying there's a point when t equals 9, 9 years after the initial 2010, p of 9 is 29.1. We can use this information. p of 9 would equal 25.2e, some constant, after nine years. We know P of nine is 29.1. So now notice, if we put in that initial point that we know, nine years, 29.1 million for a population, our only variable is K. 
So we can solve this for k. We want to isolate that exponent, so divide by 25.2. We'll have e to the k times 9 equals 29.1 over 25.2. We want to take the natural log of both sides, and you'll get k times 9 equals the natural log of 29.1 over 25.2. We're solving for k, so divide by 9. You have the natural log. Remember, these are going to look a little ugly, but we have our calculator to solve them for us. So let's get our calculator. We want to find the natural log of 29.1 divided by 25.2. And then we want to divide that by 9. And this is our constant. Our constant is going to be 0 0.01599. So we can put that up here, 0 0.01599. So here we have our final equation. This is the function for P of T. In part B, we need to use the function we just came up with for part A to predict the population in 2029. Well, 2029 is going to be how many years after 2010? 19. So t equals 19. So we're finding p of 19, which would be 25.2 e to our crazy constant times 19 years. Okay, let's let our calculator do all the hard work for us. We have 25.2 e, which is second e to the power, use that caret, 0 0.01599 times 19. And then enter and we get 34.1. Remember, we want to round to one decimal place, so our answer here is 34.1. Well, 34.1 what? What did we just solve for? We are predicting the population in 2029, and population, as we read above, is measured in millions. So the population of Texas is predicted to be 34.1 million in 2029. I guess million, not millions. In part C, we want to use this function to determine the year for which the population of Texas will reach 40 million if this trend continues. Well, 40 million is the value that we're looking for the population to be, and we know that the initial population is 25.2 e to our constant, and then our variable is t because we're determining the year. Let's isolate that exponent. So divide both sides by 25.2. You have 40 divided by 25.2 equals e to our constant times t. Take the natural log of both sides. That's going to get rid of the e and leave us with the exponent. So we'll have the natural log of 40 divided by 25.2 equals just our exponent. That constant value times t. Remember, we're solving for t, so divide both sides by that constant value. And 
and we will have t is equal to the natural log of 40 divided by 25.2 divided by our constant. So we go to that calculator. We want to find the natural log of 40 divided by 25.2. And then we're going to divide that by our constant. My calculator's a little slow. There we go. Hit enter. We get 28.9. So this is approximately equal to 28.9. And remember, we're looking at years since the initial time. So years after our initial value of 2010. We don't want to round this to 29 years because it's going to actually hit 40 million near the end of 28 years. So it'll be the end of 2010 plus 28 years. The end of 2038 is when we can expect the population of Texas to hit 40 million. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you'll check out some of my other math tutorials.